move to the next presentation. Thank you, uh, Haibo. See you later. All right. So we're going to move Thank now to the plenary talks. Okay. So the first plenary talk, which with ID 55 in your notes, is titled Insights into Automation of Construction Process Using Parallel Kinematic Manipulators. So bear with me with the list of authors here. Michael Klockner, Matthias Hage, Elena Eriksson, Henrik Malm, Klaus Nielsen, Anders Robertson, and Ronnie Anderson. So is the speaker ready? Yes, I'm ready. Are you ready? Michael, please go ahead. So, yeah. so just, just for the protocols of this presentation, uh, we'll have 15 minutes and five minutes for questions and answers. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, welcome and thanks for the today's presentation opportunity. So today I am in Sweden here. So who am I? So my name is Maike and um, I got my PhD in rehabilitation robotics in 2018, where I focused on the development of the parallel kinematic for the automated movement therapy of neurological patients. So I stayed within the parallel kinematics, but changed topic up to bigger parallel kinematics development for use in construction robotics. So in 2019, the uh, construction business was very uninvestigated from my side. And at this stage, I was quite naive and took the opportunity to live in a flat or in a house more or less for granted. So I guess most of you also did before they started to focus on architecture and or construction. But I, I realized quite late what amount of historic well knowledge is needed to build houses and how many still manual performed working steps are needed for this purpose. So anyhow, this fascinating manual performed work in combination with our opportunity of apply robotics and increasing sustainability facts drove us to combine all this into our Swedish Center for Construction Robotics, which you see here. So the Swedish Center for Construction Robotics was founded in 2018, and it is an interdisciplinary consortium of computer science, automatic control, architecture, construction management, production, structural engineering, yeah, of, of all of these com competences. And um, thereby we are able to introduce the next generation of technology into the construction sector. And the center is located in Lund here in South Sweden. And we are focusing on three different robotic solutions for use in construction robotics right now. So the robotic solutions which we use so far include an out of the shelf components industrial arm robot mounted on a mobile platform. And we use it for tasks like exact block handling, gluing or sewing nowadays. Then we have the self-developed parallel kinematics manipulator, which is so far used in lab experiments and is very suitable for prefabrication processes. And furthermore, we also have a commercial robot dock used for visual inspection on the construction side. Today, I will focus on the self-developed parallel kinematic manipulator and its adaption for construction robotic processes. The PKM, which you see here, is a new developed parallel kinematic robot. And in this video, you see the eight links of the parallel kinematic manipulator. It provides five axis continuous motion. Yeah, you have just seen the translatory motions here um, provided by the six uh, links with fixed lengths, which are mounted between cards and the support flat platform. And then we have two telescopic links also mounted between cards and the tool platform, which offers to, um, yeah, to provide two rotatory movements. Um, and through this configuration, the support platform here in the back 
is keeping a very stiff orientation while performing motions. So this type of machine provides a large singularity free workspace, high rigidity and precision. And in our lab configuration, the robot is mounted on a support structure, which is um, made out of box joints components to um, connect hollow steel beams. On the right side, you see the PKM components, which I have explained on the former slide, again with description. And on the left, you see the robot without a support structure in our lab configuration. So the rails on which the robot is mounted here are four meter long, and the height is about two meters. So here you see the workspace. So with this configuration, we can achieve a workspace with about two meter in X, 1.7 meter in Y and one meter in Z. Um, so what makes this robot also so special is this effect that we can hang it on different support structures. So it could work from top as well as from side or from bottom. And furthermore, by extending the length of the rails, we extend the workspace in X, which is quite suitable for some of the construction robotics tasks. And anyhow, the um, robot is adaptable in size in dependency of the application. Before I will present the Pelle kinematic manipulator adapted for masonry, I would like to give you some insights into masonry itself. So since we had to understand the manual processes first to transform them into automation equivalents. What we experienced by getting into masonry so masonry is a challenging application to automate. The objects we wanted to handle in the first step were bricks and mortar. And the bricks here, they have deviations, which make them challenging objects to handle. They also have individualized sides. So it is necessary to achieve a good wall impression to decide for front and back and up and down. Mortar, so mortar is for my side very unpredictable. It needs to have the right viscosity to handle, needs to be applied with a specific dispersion and a specific speed. And the application strategy and the brick laying itself are very haptic motions. Um, so, but they are needed to disperse the applied mortar, as you can see in the slide. So there's a special apply a performance of the brick and also a special dispersion of the mortar when it is applied on the layer beyond. So all in all, I would say masonry is still a real trait and a very complex task to automate. But now, how have we adapted the parallel kinematic manipulator for masonry? Step one, we designed and tested tools for different applications. Here on the left, you see brick pick and placing and mortar application. And on the right, we have wall plastering and joint raking. So the brick pick and placing, there we added an L-shaped part at the end effector and uh, added also two motors. So we had two more degrees of freedom. And we used a vacuum gripper with filter and form to be able to handle the um, dusty bricks with the rough first surface and also an injector to um, generate the vacuum. Uh, we also had some recent camera for computer vision integration. The mortar application, there we also um, added um, something at the end effector. So here it is an extruder with a circular nozzle at the end, connected to a five meter long hose, which is connected to a mortar pump on the other side. For wall plastering, we use the same extruder like we did in the mortar application, but with another orientation. And this is also connected with a hose to a mortar pump. And we used a commercial plasterboard for first experiments. For joint raking, we um, mounted a spindle inside the tool platform here and used um, eight millimeter, yeah, with eight millimeter diameter full metal milling tool. Now you see the experiments. So first dry sticking. So what you see in the video 
part of the pick and place performance with the tool I just had explained. And the performance contained pick, move, and place to build the wall. So the question, what was necessary for this performance? So the curved wall here was designed in Grasshopper by what, so information about the exact position and orientation of each individual brick could be exported. And this offered us the opportunity to feed the robot with the needed information in G-code by applying a semi-autonomous tool chain. And since we picked the um, bricks with the deviations from the stacks, the stacks were also banded a little bit. So the bricks never had exactly the same position or orientation in every cycle. So we implemented the vision solution to be able to detect displacement in comparison to a reference brick and fed the system with the values. But what we were able to pick each brick in the middle of the surface. Moving worked quite well and placing was again challenging since the height of the wall to build increased more from layer to layer than the height of a single brick, which was also caused by the brick's deviations. Um, but in the end, we decided to let them drop from top a little bit at the beginning. And here you see, um, yeah, the build wall with 11 layers, I think. For the application of mortar, there we had different constraints. So first, mortar needs to be pumpable. Mortar needs to have the right viscosity, low enough to get pumped through the hose, but high enough to be applied and mortar needs to be applied with the right speed. The nozzle here needs to have the right distance, so a distance of two to, to four millimeter between its exit and the brick. And we need to define a path where the amount of mortar overlaps as best as possible with the brick layer it is applied on and the brick layer which will be applied on top. So here you see the mortar application on the brick. And here on the right, you see the placed bricks on top. We also performed some experiments for waking. So waking is a common practice to remake joints outside of houses, since the joints are the weakest parts of the facade. And for waking, you take out um, an old joint up to 30 millimeter and refill it afterwards again. And this procedure needs to be done after about 50 years and is very dirty and expensive. Here you see how we um, tried it. We started up experiments and we determined yeah, We, we could figure out by these experiments that the robot with its high position and the big workspace fits excellent to this application since this is more or less a machining application. We also, here you see one of our first plaster experiments. So from last week, just. So we identified pumpable plaster material and applied it to the exact blocks here. And we have not achieved a continuous material flow yet, but um, could go for a vision solution, observing the amount of mortar which is applied and independently of this start and stop automatically. So what we are doing by hand here right now. But all in all, so the surface of the plastering was very planar, so that we think it will be possible by integration of specific control, like I just explained, to reduce the amount of working steps by applying an automated solution in this process. Results. So what we think, so a big challenge is to extract the silent knowledge out of the manual construction processes 
and to transform it into robot motions for the particular application. For example, manual bricklaying motion is about upholding quality, such as pushing material for visually pleasing results on the visible wall. Um, furthermore, we also need to integrate more sensory. So for example, more visual sensors for defined pick and placing of bricks regarding positions and orientations. A more haptic sensory would be good. So for pushing the brick into the layer of mortar and also flow regulation sensors to apply the exact amount of the needed mortar would be, would be very nice to have. Um, also, <clears throat> handling of process variations is very important. So since we have to handle varying common variables like uh, brick sizes, structures, and colors, and inaccuracies during robot execution also needs to be um, treated. Conclusion. So all in all, I would say that our investigations are highlighting the potential of the parallel kinematics manipulator used in construction robotics. Our big challenge is the mortar so far. So although we have involved concrete suppliers like Cementer right from the start, but we have to investigate the adaption of the mortar material to robotic processes more deeply. And our future aim is of course the use of the parallel kinematic manipulator on the construction site, which might be possible if we hang it on a special design support structure on the construction site. Now, yeah, thanks for listening and um, questions welcome. Thank you, Michael, for the nice presentation, very animated. So any questions from the audience, Dr. Boucher? Microphone. Thank you very much, Maike. Um, uh, and thank you for staying up so late for doing this for us. Uh, yes. Um, my question is, uh, what about perception? Does the robot have any perception or uh, in your experiments, uh, or is everything positioned precisely to so that they can do the activity? So no, so it's not everything positioned precisely right now. So um, so for the brick pick and placement, for example, so we used the um, we used some real sense computer vision system. So where we um, where we checked. Um, in comparison to a reference brick where the brick to pick is placed and yeah, added it to the controller so that it could pick precisely. But um, so our future aim is of course to, for example, not pick from stacks, but pick directly from uh, pallets, for example. So which could be placed at a, yeah, more or less precise position, but uh, yeah, not a specific position. So we can handle inaccuracies. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. There are more questions from the audience. And then... Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Um, my question is that um, I wanted to see how your approach is different from already commercialized brick laying robots, um, like for example, Hadrian X. Um, I see that you have a bunch of sponsors here, but I was wondering if you work with them or know about them. Ah, the sponsors. Yeah, we, we work together in right now, two different projects. So um, we, so we exchange a lot. So we, yeah, we are close to site. So we already made with the other, with the arm robot I showed at the beginning. So we made tests outside already. And yeah, what is different? So the first point, um, the parallel kinematics, for example, 
yeah, it's a special kinematic which is really suitable for these construction processes. And the other examples you um, just mentioned, they treat um, a specific case, so they handle a specific block or brick type and build a specific house type. And we want to handle in future also variations so that we are, for example, able to handle a Swedish brick, which has a different uh, size and structure in comparison to a Danish brick or whatever brick. So we would like to make it a little bit more, yeah, implement more variables to use it, um, not just for one case. I hope this answers your question. Uh, one more question, uh, Mirek, do you want to ask? Thank you, Pardis, for the question. Uh, can somebody bring the microphone? What? I think we have time. Oh, oh sorry. Yes. Hello. Um, first, thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. But I have like uh, a different perspective, maybe. Why try to automate um, like an artisan process in, with robots instead? Like try to do in a different way the construction process, you know? Why still use masonry instead, a new material with the robots? Could be really interesting to try to um, like do this. Do you have this in mind? Like don't replace the, the, the process how it is nowadays and try to make different? Um, you mean that we, um, so that we, do not copy the manual and um, automate it, but um, use, for example, different material, or is this your question? Yep, something. Ah, okay, yeah, so in the first step, so what we did, so for example, with the mortar we used, yes, of course, maybe you have in mind, uh, there is a lot of cement research, why right? don't we use something which works already, but, um, now for, for this kind of uh, yeah, masonry, which I said is a real trade, it is really, really important that we um, try to achieve the same results or even better results like um, they achieve with the manual processes. So if we are worse than the manual processes, um, yeah, this would not be so good. So we try to, um, yeah, get all this this knowledge about the material and the processes, and um, yeah, adapt it to the automation. And of course, we are open to, um, for example, if we have um, a manual process which has three part steps, and if we can um, handle it with just two steps with the automation, we are open to do this. So, but we are still investigating. So we will see what we can do. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Any more? Mir, do you still want to ask a question? Can you please bring the microphone there to the front? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just following up on uh, on previous questions about uh, compatibility with uh, previous bricklaying robotic solutions. Uh, there are a number of these uh, attempts, I remember. First bricklaying robots were being presented at uh, ISARC at, at this symposia series more than 25 years ago. And uh, the initial prototypes were coming out of Germany. And uh, I, I remember it was the University of Stuttgart specifically. And then uh, fast forward to maybe five years ago, there's a company in the US, uh, Construction Robotics, uh, that has SAM1, SAM2, SAM5, actually several versions of the, of the bricklaying robot. Uh, and they're all trying to use extremely simplistic uh, control systems. Uh, the dynamic control of parallel manipulators can be quite tricky, especially if uh, these manipulators are uh, subjected to uh, varying weight and uh, varying uh, reach. And uh, that's not very simple. And then you're running into a, a danger of um, self-induced vibrations uh, sometimes, and uh, you're running into an issue of uh, uh, natural frequency vibrations that can actually destroy the entire hardware system. Uh, 
there is a lot of challenges uh, ahead of a practical application if you want to develop it to a commercial grade. Uh, and uh, way, way back when, when we first started researching construction robotics, we came to a very simple conclusion that uh, in terms of practical applications, simple tasks that are simple to do for human workers are still quite complicated for robots. And those that are challenging for human workers are plain impossible for robots uh, to perform because of uh, control systems issues and uh, sensor integration issues, uh, all sorts of uh, integration related problems that you're running into. And I'm wondering about the what, uh, what do you envision five or 10 years from now, as far as practical implementations of your prototype? Uh, can you speak to that a little bit? <laughs> yes, there were a lot of questions in one. So I, I fully agree on one side, for example, these vibrations. So we, um, we experienced this when we uh, made so machining with this robot. So for the construction robotics processes, this was not um, a factor. So this worked quite well, but still, so we just started up, um, yeah, building this robot when I started here. So this was developed under the last two and a half years. And so we are going to make this commercial. So our partner, Cognibotics, for example, has um, is going to present this robot in a bigger version in September on a fair in Germany, I think in Stuttgart. So if I know more, I can share the um, yeah share the news to you. So um, yeah, but simple tasks. Yeah. So what what the um, so the the practical yeah applications I have seen with the other robots, they really, they focus on one specific. So there are these brick laying robots and I also have seen some plaster robots and so on, but we would like to, um, so with this, with this poly kinematic, we have got some, yeah, advantages. So relating to workspace, for example, or we also had the vision to hang it on the lift so we could, um, we could really rake out the whole facade if we use something like a construction elevator or so. So there are many, many options, but I, I think so if you would like to discuss it a little bit more deeply, you're very welcome to write me an email and then we can, yeah, have a call or so. Uh, would be nice to exchange. Thank you, Dr. Klockner, for your thorough response and really you're encouraged to follow up with her. So thank you very much. So we need to move on to the next, uh, presentation. Thank you very much for Dr. Clarker. Thank you.